Hello everyone and thanks for watching today's video. Today I'm going to talk about a condition called duodenal ulcers. Whenever I look at them, they remind me either many of them small little craters on the surface of the moon or our earth or one or two very large craters. So they come in different shapes and different sizes. So we're going to look into this further. So if you look at this uh, little picture I've drawn for you, and first thing to note that on top of it, I wrote a word peptic ulcer rather than duodenal ulcer. And I will explain this in a minute, that what is the difference between peptic ulcer and a duodenal ulcer. So just to look at the anatomy first, which I have explained in my first video of this series already. So the esophagus coming down from our mouth into the stomach, which is the black bit. I've drawn a tube over here. Then the green thing, bag-like structure here is the stomach. I've written stomach in there. And then the red one, tube which looks like a C, you can see it looks like a C, is the duodenum. Now duodenum has got four parts. This is the first straight part, which is called the first part of the duodenum. Now this is the second part of the duodenum, which is a straight part of the C, which is the third part of the duodenum. And then this is a tiny little bit, an inch long is about fourth part of the duodenum. That is the liver. That is our gallbladder. There are two tubes coming out of the liver and they join into one tube and this is called the bile duct and it comes and it opens into the second part of the duodenum. This fluffy little thing I've drawn in the middle like a leaf is our pancreas and in the middle of it you can see there's a tube running along and that also opens the second part of the duodenum. Now reason for drawing the liver and the pancreas will um, uh, you will come to know exactly why I've drawn these two structures. It looks a bit complicated. Now the question is, what are duodenal ulcers and what are peptic ulcers? Now, this is the duodenum as you know, and any ulcers happening in the duodenum are called duodenal ulcers, of course. Any ulcers happening in the stomach are called gastric ulcers or stomach ulcers. Any ulcers happening in the esophagus, which is the special lower part of the esophagus, are called esophageal ulcers. Now, the word peptic ulcer means, especially peptic means, ulcers happening wherever there is acid. So lower part of the esophagus, stomach and the duodenum are the three places where peptic ulcers take place. So when doctors talk about peptic ulcers, they mean ulcers either in the lower part of the esophagus because of too much acid or in our stomach or our duodenum. Now second thing to note is, as you can see, the red thing is the duodenum. But the first part of the duodenum I've shaded as with red lines. And why is that? Because 90-95% of the duodenal ulcers, they happen only in the first part of the duodenum down to this curve in the duodenum. And why is that? The reason is because acid comes down from the stomach into the duodenum. And so this part of the duodenum is very acidic. Lots of acid coming in through the stomach. But in the second part of the duodenum, as I spoke a minute ago, these two tubes open up, one from the liver bringing bile, one from the pancreas bringing pancreatic juice. Both these things, the bile and the pancreatic juice, have got a natural antacid in it. So as soon as the food containing the acid comes into second part of the duodenum, especially this part of the duodenum, the acid gets neutralized. So having duodenal ulcers in this part of the duodenum and lower down, although can happen, but they are not very common places to get duodenal ulcers. Now, we are going to discuss what causes duodenal ulcers. The causes of duodenal ulcers are almost similar to the causes of stomach ulcers, which I discussed in my previous video. Um, there are many different causes that can cause duodenal ulcers. On this whiteboard, I've uh, written down just a few. Now, some are very, very common. Some are very uncommon of these causes. I found them interesting, that's why I wrote it down. Now, infection with Helicobacter pylori infection, which is a little bug which lives sometime in the stomach. In certain parts of the world, this bug is very, very commonly present in the stomach and does not cause any harm. Those people live a normal life. They don't have any symptoms with ulcers or inflammation. They eat normally, they drink normally. It does them no harm whatsoever. However, patients who have duodenal ulcers the chance of infection with Helicobacter pylori is very, very high, like it is in stomach ulcers. 
it remains unclear, certainly not known to me. If you know uh, about this more, then please write in the comments below in this video that why in so many people Helicobacter pylori lip lives happily in the stomach without causing any harm to the individual, whereas in other people, the same infection can cause severe duodenal ulcers and also severe stomach ulcers. Now, second commonest cause that I have seen in my practice is, is medications. And what sort of medications? The commonest medications are uh, painkillers. You know, painkillers we take for headaches, painkillers we take for arthritis, uh, we take for other inflammatory conditions, and they are called non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Now, many of them we can get over the counter like ibuprofen, brufen, um, um, volterol, uh, etc., etc. They can cause ulcers and inflammation in the stomach. A simple tablet like aspirin can cause ulcers in the stomach and duodenum. The second other very common uh, tablet that can cause ulcers are steroids. The reason they are so common, because they are taken so commonly, most of them are available over the counter. We can get them over the counter. And the steroids are used for so many different conditions that the use of these tablets is so, so common. That is why they are so commonly seen in patients who have duodenal ulcers and stomach ulcers. Now, there are certain very, very um, uncommon tumors. They, they can happen in the pancreas and other parts, and they are called gastrinomas, and they secrete a substance which makes our stomach produce enormous amount of acid. And these patients develop very unusual ulcers, and these ulcers can happen anywhere from esophagus to the stomach to the duodenum, and even in the lower part of the duodenum, where there is almost in a normal person, there is no acid present. And so these are very uncommon tumors, but I thought they were interesting. That's why I wrote it down over there. Now, we might think that people who indulge in too much smoking, unhealthy foods and alcohol uh, will be the cause of duodenal ulcers, etc. They certainly do not help ulcers. I don't think they are exactly the cause of ulcers. I think the problem with these things is they make the symptoms and the causes much worse. And the healing becomes far more difficult for these ulcers if one continues to smoke, eat unhealthily and take excessive amount of alcohol. So what are the symptoms that patient complains of when they go to the doctor who might have peptic ulcers or duodenal ulcer? Now, first and foremost, the strange thing is many of these patients have got no symptoms. They go to the doctor feeling very tired, very lethargic. They, they get out of breath very easily. And then when the doctor does the blood, is blood test, they found to be anemic, low blood count. So doctor orders a camera test of the stomach and perhaps also the bottom end and they have, these patients are found to have ulcers which may have been bleeding very slowly. So many patients have no symptoms. Now the common symptom of uh, like any sore in our body is abdominal pain. Now the abdominal pain is a very deep boring pain and it happens usually above the belly button on the right side under the right side of the rib cage. So if I draw this little picture for you over here. So if this is our, say the rib cage, bottom of our rib cage, yeah. side of our tummy, side of our tummy, let's remove this line. This is our pelvis, this is our belly button. This is the rib cage on the right side, yeah. Now the pain they complain of is usually this spot here. Yeah, this is the spot they, they, they complain of. And the strange thing about their pain is, their pain is slightly different from ulcers happening in the stomach. Stomach ulcers hurt more when patients eat. They feel very full, yeah. The, the pain of the duodenal ulcers gets better when they eat. So they want to eat more. They want to eat more because it dilutes the acid and it makes the pain a bit better. Now, stomach ulcer patients touch their tummy like this with the hand. They say it hurts over here like this. Where duodenal ulcer patients, they point with one finger where the pain is. And classically, their pain happens middle of the night at two or three a.m. in the morning because they had the last meal at seven or eight o'clock, had a little snack before going to bed. About two or three a.m. in the morning, the stomach is empty and now it hurts. So they 
touch with one finger, this is where my pain is. They obviously complain of burning pain, which is indigestion. When the ulcers are very advanced, it starts blocking the duodenum and things don't go through easily. They start vomiting. They're reluctant to, reluctant to eat food. So they start losing weight because of vomiting and not eating enough. So these are the main symptoms. So how are duodenal ulcers diagnosed? Now, first and foremost, obviously, we are not feeling well. Tummy is hurting, lots of indigestion, vomiting, weight loss, etc. We go to the doctor, doctor examines us, and doctor organizes a few tests. When doctor examines us, he finds our tummy, especially in the upper part of our tummy, above the belly button, very sore, very tender when he presses it. Obviously, he has doubts, he has suspicion that there might be a peptic ulcer or some sort of ulcer in this patient. And he sends us for either an endoscopy, which is a camera test of the stomach, which we have discussed before, or a barium x-ray in which we drink a chalky dye and x-rays are taken and it will show an ulcer. He also sends us for some other tests. And these tests, blood test, stool test, and breath test. Now these two are done to check for helicobacter pylori infection. Very simple to do. Blood test is done to check whether patient is anemic, which means they're losing blood. And also blood tests can be used for helicobacter infection, although perhaps not as reliable as the other two, but still being used in some places. So these are the main things. Now, as I, you might recall from my, um, uh, my, when we were talking about stomach uh, ulcers, I said that in, during endoscopy, endoscopies, almost always take biopsies of the ulcer of the stomach because there's a possibility that stomach ulcer may be cancerous. Now, the possibility of cancerous ulcers in the duodenum, in my experience, is extremely, extremely small. It's very, very low. And honestly, I don't know how many duodenal ulcers I've seen over the years, but I have not seen a single duodenal ulcer which, has, which was a cancerous ulcer. So many endoscopists perhaps will not take biopsies from a duodenal ulcer, but many of them will take a precaution of repeating the endoscopy in a few weeks' time after the patient has been treated for ulcers and to see whether the ulcer is healing or not. So what is the treatment of these duodenal ulcers? First and foremost, get rid of helicobacter pylori. Um, helicobacter infection happens throughout the world. It's more common in certain parts of the world as compared to others. The reason is the way it spreads is perhaps not very clean water, uh, not very clean um, uh, uh, hygiene, food is contaminated, sometimes it transmits from one person to the other by oral contact, etc. And once, and the treatment for helicobacter is course of antibiotic, they usually two different antibiotics are given. And they're also given an antacid tablet together with the antibiotics called proton pump inhibitors, which come in different names, as you know, omeprazole, onzeprazole, pentoprazole, ezomeprazole, etc., etc. So to get rid of helicobacter, once we have given the course of helicobacter pylori, it is perhaps a wise precaution to recheck with the stool test or the breath test uh, to make sure that the infection with helicobacter is gone. Yeah, and most of the patients can be cleared of helicobacter. There are only a few patients who might need a repeat treatment or different treatment, etc. Remove the cause. Now, when I say remove the cause, remove what is causing the ulcers like steroid tablets, um, anti-inflammatory tablets, etc., etc. If patients have to take those tablets for underlying medical problems, other medical problems which require those tablets, they have to take them then it is a wise precaution to give them something to protect the stomach. And those tablets, again, are usually PPIs or proton pump inhibitors like lonzeprazole, omeprazole, ezomeprazole. All of them work equally well. Now, if the cause is like, uh, um, which is stopping the ulcers from healing is like uh, too much alcohol, too much spicy food, then the, um, the way we live, the, the way we eat and drink has to be changed as well. Smoking certainly stops the ulcers from healing, so smoking needs to be reduced or stopped altogether as well. Otherwise, sometimes they do tend to come back. Now, in some patients who will require long-term antacid tablets and they can take PPIs long-term, 
uh, maybe uh, for years or even for, for life. Now, last thing to discuss is what are the complications that can happen from duodenal ulcers. So, duodenum, to first of all, to know where it is, it is right across our back against the spine. It's sitting against the spine. So, it's not in the front, it's right at the back. So, there's a big gap between the duodenum and the front of our tummy. So, front of the tummy is over here and the duodenum is sitting right against the spine. This bit, uh, especially the first part of duodenum, is very much against the spine. That's why many of these patients, when they get duodenal ulcer, they get pain in the back as well. Their back hurts. So the first complication that can happen, as you can see, duodenum is like this hose pipe sitting against the back of our, against our back of our tummy, like this. The first thing, the ulcer can block the duodenum. It blocks it, so patients can't keep anything down. They keep vomiting, vomiting, vomiting. Um, the second problem that can happen, if it's sitting against the back like this, the ulcer can burr a hole in the front of it, make a hole, like I have drawn in this one. When the hole is created, there is, in most patients, nothing can block the hole, and all the food from inside the stomach and the, and the duodenum, and all the enzymes from the pancreas, the bile, etc., start seeping out, start leaking out into the tummy. And that's a very serious infection called peritonitis. Now, the majority of these patients will require surgery to seal the hole. Now, the second complication that can happen, or the third complication that can happen, is the ulcer, instead of eroding in the front, causing a hole, erodes at the back. When it erodes against the back, so instead of the ulcer being here, ulcer is at the back, and it erodes at the back. There's a mighty big blood vessel sitting behind it. And that blood vessel, it's like if you dig a hole in the ground, you hit the mains pipe, and break the mains pipe, and all the water leaks out. Similarly, all the blood starts leaking out and the bleeding can be absolutely torrential in these patients and the way to stop it is either with an endoscopy if possible however if they don't control with endoscope to save the person's life surgery will be required i do hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you very soon you take care